Hello Divination, thank you for joining us in this tutorial where I will be showing you how to create a blurb infographic using Divi's built-in options only. So without any further ado, let's get to it. So before we dive into the tutorial, let's take a look at what the end result looks like. This is what you can expect on desktop. And we have an alternative for tablet and phone, which looks like this. All right, so the first thing you will need to do if you're on your WordPress website is add a new page. And as usual, give your new page a title that matches the content that you are creating. So I'm just going to give it the title blurb infographic. I'm going to publish my page already and after that I'm going to enable the Divi Builder. Alright, so once I have enabled the Divi Builder, I'm going to switch over to Visual Builder right away. And we already have a section over here and I'm just going to make some small modifications to it. First of all, I'm going to add a gradient background and you can choose the colors that you want to use for it but i'm just going to use the ones that we've used in the example and you can find these color codes as well in the blog post which i have mentioned in the description below and the gradient type that we're going to choose is radial and we're going to keep a center radial direction and then we're going to um, start modifying the start position and the end position to make sure that there's no blur at all. Next we're going to upload a background image. So this is the background image that's included within the post. You can download it right away. And it's kind of like an infographic image and we're going to make some changes to the settings of it as well. We'll need to enable the actual size of the background image and use hue as our background image blend, as you can see. And then we'll move on to the advanced tab, open the visibility subcategory and make sure that we disable it on tablet and phone because we'll create an alternative for that one. All right, so this tutorial needs five different rows and these rows will have different column structures and settings and the first one will need only one column and you can immediately open the settings of this row and we're going to add zero pixels to all of the custom padding options because this will help us you know erase some space between the rows which will help us achieve the end result. So we'll need to do this for each and every row that we're using. So we're using five in total. And I'm immediately going to add another row and this row will have three columns instead of one. Again, we're going to open the settings of this row and apply zero pixels to the custom padding options that are provided to you. Now you could add another row with three columns or you could just clone the previous one and we'll need to make one additional setting to this row as well and that's making it full width within the sizing subcategory. And of course if you would like to see all of your rows you could you know use the wireframe view or you know enable the grid. All right so we have three rows already we have two to go. And the next one we're going to use is again one with three columns. And I'm going to add zero pixels to all of the custom padding options in the spacing subcategory for this row as well. And 
all right here we go and we have one row left and you could clone the first row and place it as your last one as well uh, or you could just add a new row with one column and again add zero pixels to all of the custom padding options so we have our column structure into place and the next thing we're going to do is add a blurb module and we're just going to add it once and then we'll be able to clone it and place it in the different columns that we've created so go ahead and add a blurb module to the first row in the first column give your blurb module a title then use some text for the content box All right, so then scroll down the content tab, open the image and icon subcategory, use the icon option over here and select an icon of choice. And of course you will be able to modify these for all of the blurb modules that you're using to share different information. Then move on to the design tab and we're going to make some changes to the image and icon subcategory. We're going to enable the use icon font size And we're just going to use 27 pixels for it. Then we'll open the text subcategory. And since we're using a dark background, we're going to use a light text color. Enable center text orientation. And then we'll open the title text. And of course, you can make all kinds of modifications to this title text subcategory according to your needs but we don't really have to make a lot of modifications over here. We could use the defaults um, just to save a little bit of time. And the one thing that we're going to do is add some title text shadow just to make the title pop. And for that, we're just going to click on one and we're going to use zero for the vertical and horizontal length in 0.6 for the blur strength. And for the text shadow color, we're going to use a color that's almost white. So it is a little bit more transparent than white is um, just to make our title show up a little better. Then we'll open the body text subcategory and we'll use a slighter gray color for the body text just to distinguish the title and the body. Next, we'll open the sizing subcategory and we're just going to modify the content width a little bit. All right, so we have the blurb module over here and now we can clone this blurb module and place it within the different columns of the different rows that we've created. Um, so we're actually going to make sure that all of the blurb modules are located at the left and the right side instead of in the middle. And the section background image in combination with the gradient background color will make the connection between the different blurb modules and will make it look like it's an infographic. So you'll have to clone the blurb module seven times in total and place it within the different columns. All right. And once you've done that, you can make modifications to each and every blurb module. Um, so one of the things you could do is change the icon in the icon color. Again, within the image and icon subcategory of the content app, you can change the icon and then change the color within the design tab. So you can do that for each one of the blurb modules and modify the content as well, obviously. All right, so now we have the desktop version, but we'll need to create an alternative for tablet and phone as well. So I'm going to clone this section over here. And the first thing I'm going to do is remove the gradient background along with the background image.
and instead I'm going to add the same color but just as a color in general to this section. Alright, so this is the structure that we have and now we still need to add the infographic image. So I'm just going to add an image module over here to the third row, the second column. And within the filter subcategory, you can change the colors of this image module according to the colors that you're using for this blurb infographic. Alright, so the last thing that's left to do is changing the visibility and disabling this section on desktop instead of on tablet and phone. And just make sure that you save your page. So let's take a final look at the result that we've recreated within this video tutorial. If you want to follow all of these steps, um, you can just check out the blog post where you can find all of the color codes as well, along with all of the settings of the section, the rows, and the blurb module. Well, that was all for this tutorial. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up and make sure that you subscribe to our social media channel so you'll get a notification every time we have something new for you. Thanks for watching and we look forward to seeing you in our next video.